Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imagery Channel. Uh, something really strange is happening tonight and I wanted to share really quick something that hasn't happened in a long time. <laughs> I am actually getting data here. I uh, decided to get two uh, rigs running. A rare clear night. And anyone that's seen my last video, you should recognize that target. All right, so other than the exciting imaging going, uh, let's go over a reprocess that I did uh, a couple days ago. So this is Malot 15. Uh, this is the uh, interesting structure that's in the center of the heart nebula. Now, I shot this like, I want to say it was a year ago or so, and I did do a, a workflow video on it, but that uh, workflow video um, doesn't have any of the... Um, doesn't have like blur exterminator in there and also I think my my skills have changed or improved a little bit so I went ahead and reprocessed this and I thought I'd go through the workflow on it again and then we can compare at the end and see if uh, I actually improved or not all right uh, let me real quick pull up the original uh, on astrobin that way we can look at the um, uh, the exposure where is it there it is. Uh, November 30th, 2021. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Okay, so here's here's what it looks like. Last time, I, if I recall, last time I wasn't too crazy about the colors, but I never revisited it. And uh, yep, we've got 26 hours. There's our breakdown right there. And uh, also, for those that are new to the channel, this video is not really a tutorial. This is just showing my workflow. It does assume that you might be familiar with uh, PixInsight already. I do have detailed tutorials on my channel, so if that's what you're looking for, uh, subscribe to my channel and look for the tutorials uh, that I have. I do have a beginner PixInsight tutorial that doesn't take you through a full workflow. It's just kind of a basic workflow and it, it it's designed to give you a foundation to build on. All right, so anyway, here's our HA. HA always looking awesome. Nice and clean. Uh, here's the S2. The S2 was the noisiest. Still got some good detail in there. And of course, O3. All right, so first thing I did is I ran dynamic background extraction on each of them. And actually, if you want to see how I put the reference points in there. So these are the settings that I used. And basically, I was just putting little reference points in the darkest areas. I mean, there's not really a background in this. And sometimes in a really bright a target. I may not even use background dynamic background extraction, but I used it this time. Uh, it helped a little bit with the contrast. I mean, there's no uh, there's no gradient here or anything like that. Uh, but anyway, and so yeah, here here's what they look like after running DBE. After that, it was a matter of using the LRGB combination tool. I put them together, and this is what we have. And yeah, this is not stretched. This is just an auto stretch with uh, unlinked channels. So I mean, with SHO images, the auto stretch, I actually really like how the color looks. Yes, there's some purple and magenta in there. Uh, don't be afraid of the purple stars. I noticed that lately, a lot of people talking about how terrible uh, narrowband stars are. But, I mean, <laughs> these are easily dealt with. We don't have to uh, get RGB stars if we don't want to. Now, I did run dynamic background extraction one more time against the combined image. Uh, probably didn't need to do that because this is the result and... I mean, you can see a little bit of a difference, but it's not its not huge. And then after that, I ran Blur Exterminator. 
And of course, Blur Exterminator is like magic these days. So immediately took care of the stars. And uh, let's look closer up here. Kind of hard to tell with the stars in the way. But if you focus on the structure, like just look right over here. And yeah, Blur Exterminator did an amazing job sharpening that up. All right, and this uh, is the main image that I did a lot of work on, mostly curves work, right? So I did have to crop. Uh, if you look really close, there you can see a very mild stacking artifact. This is uh, uh, this was before uh, Pixinsight was doing auto crop, <laughs> so this would have been cropped out, and I wanted to get rid of some of these terrible corner stars as well. So there we go. Crop that out. And next was Star Exterminator to remove the stars. And then we stretched. And here's our stretch. Now you notice the stretch looks um, different than the auto stretch. In fact, there's uh, most of the green actually got dialed back. And what I did, and I'll, I'll kind of demo it on here, even though the stars are on here, is I use the screen transfer function. Um, it's, uh, it's auto stretched, right? Now we got to zoom in. Actually, let me now link the channels. We'll zoom in. And I just adjusted the green, red, and blue here on this stretch. Now remember, this isn't, we haven't stretched anything yet. This is just auto stretch. But you see how you can uh, adjust that? Just start dialing back the green. So basically what I did is I just kind of tweaked this until it got to the point that I liked. And then um, uh, intensity histogram. And then you just take this and you drag it on the histogram. So now this is loaded up in the histogram channel and then drop it on your image and boom, there it is, it's stretched. So anyway, back that up. Uh, this is where we ended up after stretching. All right, so just some tweaking with the curves. Basically, what I'm trying to do is increase the contrast between this dark dust that we see in front of this uh, ionized gas. And then after I increase contrast, I brighten it because I don't want the image to get too dark. Okay, so what's going on here is, right, so it is getting kind of magenta in the back here. And I don't want it to get too purple. Uh, so we invert. We subtract a little bit of green. Actually, I think what I did is actually used curves. Instead of SCNR, I just used curves. And I did a gentle pullback on the green. And I actually, actually increased the blue value a little bit. Um, and that is what made this kind of uh, yellow. I think what my aim was is to kind of get this gold looking. Now, after doing this, it's a bit green, right, which is normal when you dial back magenta and then just more curves work. And I got it to this stage and then I moved it over to I moved over to a different workspace. All right. And I just I do that sometimes I move over to a different workspace just to uh, uh, have a clean, clean spot to continue working. Uh, so here we go. More curves work. You, you can see here clearly I, I subtracted green again. I definitely use the SCNR tool for that step. And then increasing saturation, more contrast work. Now we finally got our first mask applied. And uh, I believe the mask is, um, is this guy here. Yeah, the blue mask. And this is really kind of uh, tweaking the green a little bit. All right, so now, let's see. 
Yeah, we have a different mask on, and I'm wanting to get a little bit more work uh, in this area. And I mean, most of this is contrast with minor color tweaks. You're seeing the contrast of the image change. Uh, here's a big one here where I think I pulled back on. Um, yeah, I pulled back on green a little bit. Uh, that's what kind of converted this yellow to almost an orange. So again, I was trying to go for a gold color in the center. And uh, looks like I ended up here. All right, so at this point, I wanted to uh, work on the stars. So new workspace, here's our stars. Uh, and this is, if you've been watching my videos, uh, the technique is the same. Uh, use the arc sign stretch initially. So the arc sign stretch does a pretty good job of maintaining core colors, especially in these smaller stars. And again, don't worry about this green. This is these weird colors. It's not a problem. All right, so we're stretching. Uh, you see a mask here. So what I'm wanting to do is pull out all the tiny little stars while not allowing these larger stars to get too big. So I just masked these stars off. And it was a mask that I created with the game uh, script. Uh, let's see, we can see that. Yeah, there it is. And it was mostly the larger stars that were right on top of that center structure, Malot 15. Uh, I didn't want the stars to get too big there. All right, so I ended up, I think, here. Uh, and then what you're seeing here is, let's see. Uh, I guess there's more tweaking going on here. Oh, yeah, I was still pulling the stars out, the smaller ones. All right, there we go. So see all this ugly green? Let's get rid of this ugly green. We use SC and R tool, and there, green's gone. Um, I mean, that, <laughs> that really did the job. I don't even see too many purple in here. But uh, invert again, subtract green again, invert back. And that's pretty much it. I think, oh, oh yeah, I boosted um, saturation a little bit more. And so there are our stars. And uh, then I use uh, pixel math to put them back in there. Let's see, yep, there's the formula that I'm using. And this is the output. All right, so uh, how does it compare to the previous attempt? Let's pull it up real quick. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I mean, they both look pretty good. Definitely a difference in color. Now, I've always been an advocate of leaving some green in the SHO images. Uh, definitely more green, but uh, I still have some green in here. It's just not an, it's not overwhelming the color. And I also think I can see more, definitely better contrast and a little bit more detail just looking it out here. But I mean, the colors here is a purely subjective uh, thing and I wouldn't doubt that uh, some of my viewers here might prefer the original color to the um, to the new one but uh, let's take a closer look let's uh, this will let us get a better idea of the processing see how the current attempt compares to the previous yeah so <laughs> actually I mean for ignoring the colors uh, it's a huge difference. Certainly Blur Exterminator gets most of the credit here, I think. Uh, and Noise Exterminator, definitely. I mean, this, this newer image is a lot cleaner uh, than the original. All right, I mean, over here, we can see some faint structure in here. That I mean, we can see that it's there, but it's, it's not as well. And there's a lot of these... Yeah, I guess this is the noise. A lot of a lot of this uh, color noise in here that we definitely don't have. Oh, look at that! Look at that! So we got a little star here that 
isn't even resolvable on the old image. Same stars, same data. Look at the difference in the stars. Oh, one step that I did uh, leave out. It, I guess it was all the way at the end when I was doing the final tweaking on the message. I used, did use the dark structure enhance script. And if I remember correctly, I probably used it on the original too. Uh, the help not rather pull out but but create more contrast in these dark regions but anyway yeah yeah I mean look at all this color noise in here uh, my s2 data actually had a little bit of banding in it and you can if you look closely you can even see it in this reprocess uh, this 294 mono camera it tends to band if it's starved for data. It, it does it pretty bad on um, on like galaxy shots uh, with narrow band if you're trying to get HA, for example. So I've started increasing the gain. Um, the gain values on this, I think, were 120. I think uh, for, for uh, narrow band shots where there's a lot of nebulosity, I've bumped the gain up to 130, and that seems to do pretty good. Uh, for galaxies, when I'm just getting, shooting HA, right, so there's not going to be a lot of uh, HA data, just uh, the little knots of HA in there. Uh, I've bumped the gain all the way up to 250, uh, and that's with 600 second exposures uh, to eliminate that banding. Um, if anyone knows anything about the banding on these 294s, if there's a better way to handle it, uh, please let me know in the comments, because that's... That's probably the most annoying aspect of this camera for me. All right, ah, uh, yeah, and look at this this area down here. Yeah, so I mean, the stars look better. It's less noisy. We're seeing details uh, better. So definitely an improvement. I mean, I don't know if I would call it a huge improvement, but definitely an incremental improvement. Uh, so the image on the left is definitely a higher quality job than the image on the right. And like I said, color palette wise, I mean, that's that's a personal choice. Um, I think I like the colors on the on the new one more, maybe. I don't know. I do like all this blue here. <laughs> but anyway, so there it is. Malot 15, a reprocess using new techniques, new software, specifically the RC Astro software, all captured with that 294 mono, six nanometer astronomic filters, and the Celestron Edge HD8 with the 0.7 reducer. All right, so that's all I got for tonight. Uh, hopefully the night stays clear and I get a full run on both of these rigs. Uh, looks like we may get another clearer night uh, this weekend possibly so if I could get a couple clear nights then that means I will have completed a few of my incomplete projects that you may have seen from my last video and uh, I'll be able to share that data possibly as early as next week okay so everyone have a good evening and clear skies